Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul, and if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome, and a big welcome to all my existing uh, viewers. See, nice to see you all back again. Well, today's recipe is a worldwide famous recipe. Everybody loves it, or most, almost everybody. It's a traditional apple pie. Uh, and although very simple to make, Lots and lots of people write and tell me they have great difficulties making an apple pie. Well, I'm going to show you how we made them in the bakery, but I'm making a plate pie instead of the individual ones that we made in the bakery. Okay, but the, 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 the key is preparing the apples. That's where the secret lies. So I'm going to go show you the ingredients and then we'll get on with making the pie. I'll see you shortly. Right, here we have the ingredients for my apple pie. I'm using, oh, by the way, I'm only giving you the ingredients here. The quantities, don't worry about at the moment. They will be underneath the video, they'll be on my website, and they will be on the screen when I'm making the pie. Okay, so we've got Granny Smith's apples. Sugar, you can use white or brown. Butter. Corn flour. Powdered clove lemon juice and you'll need some pastry I've made mine this morning this is my uh, basic short crust pastry I haven't sweetened it I haven't done anything extra to it that's what I do uh, and uh, that's in the fridge chilling uh, while I'm talking to you now I'm just brought it out to show you so I'll go through the ingredients again it's granny smith's apples sugar white or brown butter corn flour powdered clove or cinnamon if you wish and some lemon juice so we'll prepare the apples and we'll get cracking and show you how it all works so I'm putting the apples into the pan you can use a shallow pan or a deep pan it doesn't make a lot of difference I'm using a shallow pan just so you can see what's happening in there and into there I'm going to add first of all the butter And the sugar and the either clove or if you're using cinnamon you add that at this stage and the lemon juice just going to give that a little turnover now just to make sure the butter's near the bottom of the pan then it melts a bit quicker now I'm going to put the lid on this and cook these on a medium-high heat for about four to five minutes. We don't want to cook them down to a pulp, but we need to let the water come out of them, the juice. Then it doesn't come out during baking the pie, otherwise it all forms in the bottom of the pie and makes it very, very soggy. The only thing I haven't put in there at the moment is the corn, corn flour. So we'll put that in a little later and I'll show you. I'll just give them another little stir. You can see the water starting to come out or I can see that happening now. I'm going to put the timer on and come back in four or five minutes. Okay, the apples are now ready. A lot of juice coming out of them. I'm going to pour them into the colander here. Remember, we're not cooking the apples right through, we're just softening them. I'm putting the apples in the colander and I'm going to let the juice run out of those for just a couple of seconds. There we go. Once we've done that, once we've done that, I'm going to remove this. I only put that there so I could stand the... the um, the basin on the hot on the hot plate that's all no other reason this is going to go back into the pan now this juice beautiful apple juice and I'm going to mix with the uh, corn flour I'm going to mix a little drop of water 
is to make it into a slurry, then we don't get any lumps. There we are. And that's going to go in there with the heat on, stirring. Now this will thicken the juice. We're going to thicken it and reduce it slightly. If you find it's coming too thick and you haven't enough, means we haven't enough juice come out of the apples, because some are juicier than others, then I'll show you what we do. Just put that on a lower heat. It's coming up to the boil now and thickening. There we go. Now it looks like we could do with a little drop more water in there. Just a little drop. Otherwise it's too jelly. There we go. And then we're going to pop the apples back into that nice syrupy juice. Give them a good stir around. Turn the heat off now. A good stir, and I'm going to transfer them to the bowl and leave them to cool because, as I keep telling you every time, we can't put a hot filling into a pastry case. So, I'm going to transfer it to the glass bowl, let it cool down, and I'll come back when it's ready to be used. So, we've got the filling cooling down. This is the tin I'm going to use, it's a, an 18, I think it's 18, it's just a sec. Yes, 8 inch, 20 centimeter uh, cake, um, sorry, pie tin. Now it looks a bit dilapidated, don't worry about that. It's still non-stick and I've had it 35 years. Made in England it was, it's not a Chinese affair and it still works. So that's perfect. So, and the pastry is from my basic short crust pastry. And underneath the video, down underneath, uh, you'll find a link to that. Uh, and there's also, I think, a video as well showing you how to do it. Now, this is the basic uh, dough. I haven't added any sugar or anything to it. You can add some sugar to it if you want, but there's sugar in the filling and there's also sugar uh, in, on the topping. So we'll get this pastry rolled out. and uh, we'll get the pie filled. And when you're rolling pastry, as I've always said, keep it on the move, keep turning it round so it doesn't stick to the bench. Okay, just keep rolling it round. Now we don't want it too thin, and we don't want it too thick. It's really entirely up to you how you, how you want your pastry, but just make sure it's just slightly bigger than the tin, so it has, to, has some overlap as it comes up. Just going to move that around a little bit more. Now, collect it on your rolling pin like this. And then roll it back over your tin gently like that. When we're pushing down the pastry, don't push it in the middle. Lift it from the sides and let it fall into the tin. It isn't a very deep tin, so you don't have much work to do. The weight of the pastry will really f let it fall in. And then just make sure there's no air trapped between the pastry and the tin. That's the main thing. There we are. Now I'm not going to trim the pastry off there at the moment, I'm going to leave it, uh, but I'm going to roll the lid first and then we'll fill the case. So I'll take some more pastry to roll the lid. Now come to the filling of the apple pie. The filling here is nice and cool and there should be just enough to go into this Make sure all the juice is in there. See how nice and thick the juice is, like I told you it would go. We've let it cool down. Keep it piled up in the middle. 
don't flatten it down too much because it will sink a little as it's cooked but we do want to make sure it's full and the pastry is touching the filling we don't want any big air gaps in between now you can just wet this pastry with some water I've cracked an egg to do the top so I'm going to use the bit of egg here because otherwise it'll be wasted so just go around the pastry but water will do exactly the same don't worry there we go and we need to put the lid now on the on the pie roll it right over a little gap there which I've there we go and then take the back of a I take the back of a an ordinary table knife and go round like that that's right now any pastry you have left over you can of course freeze if you want if you want to roll a bit out and make some fancy leaves on top just cut it down like that and then cut some diamonds and make some little veins like leaves on it that's one that's two we want one more these bits can be all gathered up just make a line down the middle and then just touch your knife point to make some little veins there we go now we're going to we're going to egg wash the top of this you can either egg wash it or you can just use egg white or you can use water oh sorry i haven't crimped the pastry beg your pardon just go around and do that next you can use your fingers and thumbs like I'm doing or you can use the uh, tangs of a fork that's entirely up to you just as long as we've got a seal we're not going to lose any juice outside now I'm going around with the egg wash as I said before I was saying you can use egg white you can use water if you want and then once we've got a nice coating of egg on there all over I'm going to sprinkle some sugar on there I'm just going to lay these little leaves like that I'm going to make a little hole in the middle for some air steam to come out and then I'm going to go with my sugar all over that gives a nice crispy top to the pie now that's going to go in the oven now at 180 for about 35 to 40 minutes I'll pop it in the oven and I'll show you how it is when it comes out well here it is straight from the oven I think you'll think I think you'll agree it's nice looking pie it's nice and firm on top crunchy with the sugar it's very very hot now that needs to sit there for about 15 to 20 minutes before I cut it um, I always like when I cook a pie like this I always like to leave it sitting for the same length of time that I've cooked it and this was exactly 30 minutes I timed it so I'll leave it, I'll leave it for about 20 minutes anyway and then we'll see about cutting it and having a look inside okay okay let's have a look and see what's happened inside the pie shall we And hope for the best there we are I think that looks beautiful a lovely piece of pie Now all that needs now I think is just a nice little drizzle of custard. I 
and I think that looks absolutely beautiful. Well, this is all I've got time for today. So it's Mr. Paul saying bye for now. And if you haven't subscribed, go underneath, give the little subscribe button a click. You'll see a bell icon. Click on that as well. And YouTube will give you a notice every time I put up a new video. If you have enjoyed the video, share it, please, with your friends on social media. Give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions, suggestions or comments, leave those in the comment section below as well. I do read every single one and I try to answer as many as I possibly can. Okay, so this is Mr. Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.